Hi, welcome to Gut Savior. Let's call this topic Microbiome Unveil, okay? There is a lot of confusion and a lot of information, good and misinformation about gut microbiome. I want to address this to make it as simple as possible, even though it's very, very difficult, okay? So our understanding has really evolved and we are at a point now that we can comfortably say that the gut microbiome is the ticket to your health. If you understand it, if you follow what your gut microbiome wants, if you keep your gut microbiome happy, you are going to live a very long and healthy life, okay? Free of diseases of many, many kinds. So what our understanding is right now is that we have 100 trillion bacteria, virus, fungi, which are good, friendly bacteria inside our gut. Okay, if you put them all together, it's almost as good as a small watermelon. So what it tells you, it's almost like an organ system, but it's spread out throughout the colon mostly. Your total body cells are 20 to 30 trillion. So it is almost like three to four times more you have bacteria. So you are, or we are, more bacteria than we are human, okay? So why are we provided, each of us, with trillions and trillions and trillions of these gut microbes. Together, in that environment, they are called microbiome. Predominantly, they are bacteria. That's why we often say bacteria, but they are viruses and they're also fungi. So what is it? What are they doing there? And why do we need them? So the important thing to understand is that they together are capable of digesting or fermenting food products that we cannot as human. So all we have to do is to feed them what they want. And in turn, after they ferment these, especially fiber, they produce chemicals which are beneficial to us. They produce nutrients which are beneficial to us. And they are beneficial in so many ways. They can produce excellent blood pressure regulation. They can normalize your blood glucose and your insulin sensitivity. They can create healthy heart and they can create healthy colon, which means less heart diseases, less colon cancers, better diabetes control, better weight management. You can actually lose and maintain weight if you feed your gut bacteria really well, okay? So I'm going to ask you a simple question. Why do we have so many varieties and species of the same kind of food? If the divine intervention wanted us to just sustain ourselves, one kind of edible plant, one kind of edible seed, one kind of banana or other fruits and vegetables, wasn't that enough? Why do you need so many different kind of rice? The black rice, the red rice, the wild rice, the brown rice. Why? And why do you need so many different kind of bananas? Most of us are going to die without even trying the variety of food that's available to us. Apart from Chiquita, Cavendish, banana, what have we tried? How many of us are actually having plantains, the red bananas, the purple bananas, the finger bananas, baby bananas? Why do we have so much? So many different kind of seeds. Well, we can have peanuts alone. Why do we need almonds? Why do we need walnuts? Why do we need so many different kind of green leaves and colorful leaves as well? Now you're making connection, okay? That it is because we have so many different kind of bacteria in us and they all have their preferences. So the more diversity of bacteria and the microbes you're going to have in your gut, the more different kind of nutrients you're going to produce and, and build up inside your body. So the diversified food that we're gonna eat will diversify your gut microbiome. And the more stable, the more diverse, the more strong they are, the more healthy they are. And they then will drive away all the bad bacteria. Okay, they will get rid of Salmonella, E. coli, Staph, Clostridium when they're trying to affect us. And the good bacteria here are your Lactobacillus, your Streptomophilus, your Bifidobacteria, your Lactobacillus. These are the ones that are going to take over and compete and drive away all the bad bacteria. The bad bacteria are the ones that cause damage to the lining of the wall of the bowel. 
they deplete the mucin, the layer that protects us, okay? And they create leaky gut. And through that, they create inflammation because of the noxious, toxic substances they produce, the bad bacteria. Who's going to drive them away from your gut? The good bacteria. So that's the gut microbiome. And what do they like? They like prebiotics. What is prebiotic? It's not commercial products out there. Prebiotics are simple, soluble fiber, the plant-rich proteins that are available to us throughout, from asparagus to banana to avocado. You know, there is nuts, seeds, lentils of all kinds, beans of all kinds, black beans, pinto beans, red beans, kidney beans of all kinds. You know, they, they are the ones which are rich plant proteins, chickpeas and whole grains. So these are the ones that we need. When you have that prebiotics, it has that kind of, of soluble fiber that your body cannot digest as human, but your gut bacteria can ferment it and create short chain fatty acids like butyrate, okay? That substance is the gold that goes inside your bloodstream, that repairs the leaky gut, that feeds your colon sites. Colonocytes are the colon cells so that they don't turn into cancers in the future. They go into the bloodstream to regulate your blood pressure. They create insulin sensitivity, which means your blood glucose is gonna be in control. And they are going to drive plaques away from your arteries. So create better heart and avoid heart diseases. That much of value you're getting by creating lactic acid, these good bacteria drop down the pH so that most of the bad bacteria don't survive. If they are willing to do so much for us, what are we doing for these bacteria? The gut microbes. A woman, when she gets pregnant and has a baby inside, she thinks everything about what should I eat to protect the baby? What should I not eat to harm the baby? What should I take supplements? What kind of drink I should avoid? She's thinking about it, thinking about the baby. We have 100 trillion baby microbes inside us who need our attention. If you give them attention, they are going to return the favor thousandfold to you, okay? Now we understand the balance inside the good bacteria and the bad bacteria is what determines our fate in life. What happens to us? Colon cancers, heart disease, obesity, weight gain. It's all determined by the kind of microbes you have. And the food that we really need to keep this healthy, these microbiome healthy, I'm going to come to you in one second. So this is what we find, that if you eat Western ultra-processed diet versus you take keto diet, versus you take Mediterranean diet, versus high-fiber plant-rich diet, every kind of food changes your gut microbiome in different ways and that determines your health. It is that simple. Western ultra-processed diet, it creates increased firmicutes. The firmicutes bacteria go up and the good bacteroidus go down. The ratio is increased firmicutes to bacteroidus. And it increases those bacteria which are causing inflammation. That processed diet, all kinds of chips, all kinds of donuts, all kinds of food that have emulsifiers, processing, ultra-processing um, agents that have been used, you just read the ingredients. You have carrageenan, you have emulsifiers, you have dis, uh, diglycerides and all kinds of, you know, they eventually drop down the good bacteria. They damage the bifidobacteria and they damage the acromancia. The acromancia is what keeps the mucin layer in your gut healthy. So it's the, 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 the barrier is not broken. The gut intestinal barrier, as soon as it's broken, you have leaky gut because now the bad bacteria can invade and send in their endotoxins of all kinds to your bloodstream and cause you inflammation. So you are reducing by all these processed sugary food that is available out there to us, easily available, are the ones that are causing damage. If your diet is pizzas and spaghettis and donuts and nuggets and burgers and cheese, all of that is in the bag of potato chips and cookies and crackers, all of those are included in the ultra-processed kind of food. You see how you're damaging yourself. You're reducing bacteroidus. You're reducing bifidobacteria, the ones that produce butyrate for you, that produce 
short chain fatty acids for you they're going down acromancia that actually acromancia mucinophila that maintains the mucin but it also creates satiety or satisfaction after eating small amount. That acromantia is gone and you are obese now. With that kind of food, you are bringing obesity by changing gut microbiome. Now look at this. People have the fat of the keto diet. In short term, keto diet can, with the high proteins, can help you. Maybe lose weight initially, but it cannot last long term because it can also encourage the bacteria which are pro-inflammatory. They are causing inflammation inflammation, bilophilia. So, and it reduces long term if you keep using and you don't have enough of fiber. In high keto diet, if you don't take enough fiber, you are not producing butyrate. That butyrate is the one that controls everything, that heals the leaky gut, that removes the inflammation, that controls and maintains your blood pressure and blood glucose. And that feeds your colon cells to become healthy. You are reducing it with your keto diet. You, because you don't have enough fiber long term. How about this? Going into Mediterranean diet and high fiber plant rich diet. Look at this. Your bifidobacteria goes up. Lactobacillus goes up. Here again in high fiber, bifidobacteria goes up. That is what you need to produce butyrate. And then if you go down further, the high fiber is even better than Mediterranean the increased butyrate produces it strongly. So if you look at this, doesn't it clearly explain what we should be eating? Mediterranean and high fiber diet. It's as simple as that. So let's look at what other things happen here. In these diet, you look at this. In the ultra processed diet, endotoxin and systemic inflammation. You have sh short term benefit, but long term you have mixed effect with the keto diet. But the diversity is lost in Western processed diet, ultra processed diet. The reduced diversity, the loss of beneficial species of microbiome leads to microbiome extinction. When these trillions and trillions of cells are not getting the right kind of food, the prebiotic high fiber food. Okay. Don't mix it up with probiotics, which are live culture bacteria. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about any supplements here. I'm talking food, avocado, artichoke. These are the things, the banana, the nuts, the seeds. These are the prebiotics, the lentils, the chickpeas, the beans. Okay, that's what we're talking about, including onion and garlic. They have all good prebiotics. That, if you take in the diet, then you get back the diversity. The diversity is actually increasing in Mediterranean and it increases strongly in high fiber plant rich diet. Okay, so you look at then what happens to the short chain fatty acid production where the butyrate comes up, severely reduced. You are literally starving with the ultra processed food in our diet. We are severely starving our gut microbiome. Okay, even in keto, it is reduced. But here it's moderately high to high. Again, in the Mediterranean and the high fiber diet, you have high amount of short chain fatty acids that makes your colon healthy, your heart healthy, your blood pressure and glucose control. And and maintains your weight, okay? Leaky guts, severe leaky gut effect, if you look at in the high processed food. And this one again, it protects the barrier and strongly protects the barrier. Obesity occurs here in the high processed food, insulin resistance, even fatty liver disease. Here you get weight loss in the keto diet short term, but in the long term, you may not have the same benefit. Again, in Mediterranean diet, you have cardiometabolic protection. And in the high fiber diet, it improves glucose and cholesterol and creates satiety, which we need. So you don't keep craving for food. That's what the high fiber, high plant based, high protein, plant protein based food is going to do for you. So again, to keep it very simple, we Western diet definitely thumbs, thumbs down. Keto diet, Short term good, long term down. Mediterranean, one thumbs up. High fiber diet, two thumbs up. So now we understand what it means to have a good healthy microbiome. Because microbiome, your microbiome, the healthier they are, the healthier you are. 
okay? And there is definite differences between the microbiome of a healthy person and an unhealthy person. There's definite gut microbiome difference between an obese person and a lean person. Studies in mice have shown that if you take a germ-free mouse, okay, mouse which is raised without a bug, and you take a obese microbiome stool sample, and from a person and put it in that mouse, you're gonna get an obese mouse out of them. If you take the gut microbiome, a sample of the stool the, from a lean person and transfer it to the, lean, to the, to the germ-free mouse, it's gonna turn out to be lean. And now we know, right? Why? Because you have in the obese gut microbiome, you have more firmicutes and less bacteroidetes. So there is a difference. And how do you feed bacteroidetes? By giving them prebiotics. And prebiotics in the form of food again, okay? All the soluble fiber that you can get. Read the list of food that provides good high prebiotics, and it's all plant-based proteins mostly. Plant-based proteins are the ones that your gut microbiome, that your gut microbes love, and that will eventually keep you healthy, keep your weight in balance, and keep all your ills away, like fatty liver disease, heart disease, diabetes, blood pressure, and colon cancers away. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I clarified some of the, the concept of the microbiome for you.